It is time for an update from medtech company Biosurgeon and their current warrant exercise. Warmly welcome to Nicole Olesen, your CEO of the company. Thank you very much. You develop drugs to fight invasive fungal infections. Um, they are increasing globally right now. Um, how dangerous is this? So the um, invasive fungal infection is also a life-threatening fungal disease. And there are two components that uh, is important. One is uh, the incidence. So approximately 6.6 .6 million people are hit by an invasive fungal infection or life-threatening fungal infection. And 2.8 million die from the fungal infection. That's a mortality rate of 40%. It's really high. So this is like an unmet medical need. Um, and it is actually more than the most deadly cancer. Um, so it is a, a huge problem. Mm. Could you give me an example of this? Yeah, I, I think we should also talk about resistance. Yeah, so the other component uh, is resistance. Resistance formation, which is, is uh, a big issue. So basically when you're treated with an antifungal, something that should treat your fungal disease, then um, there's a risk that the fungus will mutate and form resistance. So suddenly your treatment stops working, it becomes ineffective. And one example of that, which is a global concern, is Candida auris. So Candida auris was first discovered in Japan, then it migrated to United States, and now it's spread to the rest of the world. So this particular fungus grows and spread in wet, on wet surfaces. And uh, so it's particularly found in intensive care units. And today, there's only one treatment for candida auris. And this treatment is fungistatic, as we call it. It means it inhibits the growth, it doesn't kill. So it's a matter of time to when uh, patients become resistant to that particular treatment and you can't overcome candida auris. Another example is aspergillosis or aspergillus fungus, which is a m very common fungus. And uh, if you have resistant aspergillosis, then the mortality is 80%. There is no treatment for it. Hmm. That sounds very scary, both the resistant piece and how deadly um, it is. So what is your solution to this? So by a surgeon, uh, we would like to contribute to this, these uh, problems of life-threatening fungal diseases. So our... Uh, our compound, BSG, is uh, a broad spectrum uh, fungus, so it's fungicidal, that means it kills the fungu fungus. And then on top of that, it's a no mechanism of action. So we know it kills the fungus, we know it's broad spectrum. So this is uh, what we are working on currently. Mm -hmm. and you now have made a proof of concept study, or you're currently doing it, and now you have early results. Uh, what does the study show so far? So the proof of concept study is a study where we uh, test if BSG can handle um, difficult to treat fungus and also resistant strains. So to come into that study as a patient, you need to be intolerant to standard of care, or you need to have formed resistance. So you can't continue with a standard of care. So this, this is what we call a kind of rescue therapy. And uh, we, ha <coughs> we have, with the first five patients, we included uh, one patient with mucormycosis. Mucormycosis is black fungus, and black fungus is a deadly fungus. And it basically eats you up from inside. So it eats soft tissue, it eats bone, um, and there's very, very little treatment um, to offer patients. We had three patients with resistant aspergillosis or refractory aspergillosis. Um, and then we had one patient with a mixed infection, uh, both mucormycosis and aspergillus. We had, when we talk about the outcome, then we had uh, two patients that fully recovered. We had two patients that improved. And then we had one patient that unfortunately died, uh, 
buy courses or off courses unrelated to uh, BSD, unrelated to our drug. At the same time, I think it's also important to mention we didn't have any severe side effects with BSD. So it is extremely reassuring for us that uh, we have a potential product. Yeah, I can understand that. And now you received approval to actually uh, increase the dose in the next group of patients. What are your expectations? So when you increase a dose, we would think we have, be we have a very, very good chance or we will have better results. We will have probably more patients that have effective treatment, very effective treatment. And uh, it also gave us another hope which I think is, is very interesting. So the first patient, um, or let me uh, go one step back. So standard of care in these uh, patients that have difficult or resistant uh, fungal infection, that's normally medical treatment and then surgery. And when you do surgery, you remove uh, the infection side. So you remove a vital organ, you remove a lung, you remove a kidney, and that's kind of standard of care. The first patient, gave us another perspective and gave us hope. So the first patient was treated with BSD and in principle he should have gone through surgery, but he did not. He stayed on BSD and he recovered fully. So that means he did not have surgery, he did not have removal of his lung, which was the intention. So he could kind of maintain his daily life he could uh, he maintain his quality of life. He could uh, continue his life as before. And it's extremely important for patients just to get cured without the complications of surgery and without the complications of what happens after surgery. And it's extremely for hospitals that they can avoid the complicated surgeries. And it's also very, very important for healthcare systems that you have a medical treatment and you don't need the surgery on top of that. So basically you did not just stop the fungus, you saved his lung. Yeah. In this case. Well, exactly, so you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, then we must know when do you uh, expect the final results, uh, results of this study? So the results of this study is planned to come out in uh, end um, January 2025. Mm. But we will, as we have done with cohort one, uh, report continuously. When we have new results, we'll share it mm. with everyone. Uh, this is potentially huge news, of course, for yeah. for uh, patients suffering uh, globally. So then, of course, uh, you have to move on with the development. And I guess that's the purpose with the current warrant exercise. Um, what activities will they fund? So. Uh, we have this warrant exercise. So those who support us in the spring have an offer of uh, executing their warrants. The technical details I will leave to our CFO and he's on the homepage. Uh, our vision with this capital injection is that uh, we will prepare for phase two and three. And um, that means uh, we have to produce new BSE. Um, we have to have regulatory interaction to make sure we go the right pathway as expected from the regulators. And uh, we have then to prepare for uh, phase two and three, the protocols, the uh, interaction with investigators, etc. And on top of that, it's very important for us. We have a very good relationship with our partner in India, Alchem, and we want more partnerships uh, globally. So we cover a bigger area. Well, best of luck with that next year. Thank you so much for coming here, Tina Kohl-Olesen from Biosurgeon. Thank you for having me.